Welcome back to Physics 3740 at the University of Utah. Today we're going to begin uh, a few days of lecture uh, on where we'll be discussing unbound states um, as opposed to what we've been talking about so far in quantum mechanics in the last week or two, which is unbound, which is bound states. So um, up to now, again, we've only been considering states for which um, if you look at large values of um, x, so uh, we have some potential well or some sort of uh, potential that is um, uh, centered around x equals zero, that uh, at large at large values of the, and we're all do, we're doing one dimensional stuff, so large values of the of the coordinate x, um, then the energy is, and, and for bound states, is always less than the potential energy at that position. So what that meant and what we've seen is that that confines the particle to a particular region. Okay, And, and the region that it is confined to can, de can depend on the energy. For example, in the harmonic oscillator, the higher the energy of the particle, uh, the wider the potential is, and it can um, occupy a larger um, volume or a larger range in, in x. Okay, um, in unbound states, um, in, contra in contrast, then we have that uh, the energy is less than the uh, potential energy in only some regions of space, or, or can be, and so, um, and so we we know that uh, we don't have uh, uh, the same kind of boundary conditions that we would have in a um, in bound states and so uh, the particle is, is not going to be confined to a particular region although there still can be um, certain boundary conditions which must be satisfied. So in the case that the particle is not confined what this means is that in, uh, the particle can be found at least over uh, in some uh, part of the potential can be found um, anywhere, okay? And so if you integrate um, such a situation, sorry, so for the for the unbound case, if we try to normalize the wave function, that is we integrate the uh, psi star psi uh, over all space, um, then uh, th then that integral is going to diverge, okay? It's going to go toward to infinity because at least over some large um, sort of semi-infinite at least part of the um, of the potential of, of space um, the particle can be found anywhere, okay? Um, and this, this general situation kind of uh, corresponds in a general way to a beam of particles with, um, with a, where the, uh, where we have a number of part, uh, uh, say linear density, that is in one dimension, a um, number of particles per unit length, and we'll call that rho. Usually we reserve rho for mass per unit length or mass per unit volume, um, but it, it doesn't really, really make much difference here. Um, we're just, for this sort of situation, we're going to call it, you know, we're going to sort of designate rho as the number of particles per unit length. We're talking about one dimension. And so in that case, um, the normal, we can normalize um, the wave function by um, indicating that if we integrate psi star psi uh, from a to, from uh, between a and b, that we get uh, uh, that that the psi star psi becomes the um, the uh, integral of the of this linear density rho, okay, and um, and so if we basically consider a plane wave solution, that is a to the e to the a times e to the i k x, a is the amplitude, e to the i k x is the oscillating part, um, this i again is the imaginary number. We if it, if we integrate that between a and b we just get a squared times b minus a, and so we see that that's b minus a times the density, 